to close the day. <laughs> Yesterday we closed with Faith and today we close with Skip Jennings, who is a dear friend of mine and many of ours here on the, on the stream. And he was another one that built a life that he loves, you know? He uh, is now uh, working in the whole transformation uh, spiritual business. He and I, I know him and Faith, I knew Skip from fitness, but I met Faith through Agape, where I suddenly, I used to go second, second Sunday, it was their choir. And I'm like, wait a minute, I know that person. Oh my God, it's Skip Jennings. And so he has transitioned into his calling. This truly is his calling. Uh, Skip is going to help you find your next yes. So this is a time to get quiet. And he's going to help you get quiet and take everything that you're, you're hearing um, and move it into your best possible future with no agenda. There's no pressure, no rush, on your own time. Skip Jennings is the author of The Little Book for Big Transformations, The Lotus Kitchen and Spirit Explosions. I love those names. He is a motivational speaker, a trusted transformational coach, and the owner of Mind Body Spiritual Solution. Skip is a 30-year veteran within the health and fitness profession and a recent graduate of the Michael Bernard Beckwith School of Minister at Agape University. I know Agape well. As a minister, yoga instructor, personal coach, and group fitness instructor, Skip transforms the planet one session at a time, and I would adventure one thought at a time and one idea of a time. Oh, <laughs> hello. Hello, Petra. how are you? My heart is filled with absolute gratitude in this moment. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this. This is amazing. What I, I'm calling this the evolution. I, I stopped calling all this that we're experiencing social distancing. I'm calling it the social evolution. And you're a part of that. You're part of that. Can I? I'm going to out you because uh, 25 years ago. Oh no, you. I know. 20, yes, wait, 25 years ago. I met you at the very first group fitness um, workshop. It was music magic. Do you remember that? How to use your music. It was something like that. You that, came. That, that sounds like something I would come up with. It's always like. Mm -mm. Yeah. You taught us how to use music properly. You came to Lisa V A Hill Twenty Four Hour Fitness, oh. and I was a coordinator there. And and Donna Meyer says, "You well, Petra's coming. She's the best in the world, and you got it." I went. I fell in love with you then, and it was like, let's do this. <laughs> so I'm honored to be with you here. Yes. Oh, now back in the day, back in the back day. Back in the day. So the end of all of this is all about connection. And what I think is so powerful for you, Skip, is, you know, I'm hearing that a lot about people as we bring this weekend to a close is mm. where we are, you can follow what you should be doing. You can follow what you have been doing, and it's going to come forks forks in the road where you go, am I going to do what I've always done? Or am I going to follow my calling, make it work for the community I want to serve, make it work for my life because we have to keep a roof over our head, and maybe right. those white footprints in the sand. White, yes. footprints, no, white footprints in the snow. <laughs> exactly. Sand, snow, whatever. I know. So you are now a minister. And let's talk about the yes. What do you yeah. mean by your next yes? Um, well, I I know from my own experience in, in being a student and a friend of uh, Michael Bernard Beckwith, and a lot of your listeners know this and have seen him on you know different things like The Secret or Agape International Spiritual Center. He taught us early on in this journey, there's a difference from what you do to make money and what we call the livelihood. Your livelihood is when you realize that you're doing exactly what you were meant to do on this planet. And to also understand your gifts are not for you, boo. I love that you use the boo word there. Your gifts are for it to inspire the rest of the world. That's why we're here. We're here in this human incarnation to reveal our divinity. And and for me, and I, I love to use the word God, but I also use Gaia, I use universe, I use, because it's all pretty much, we're talking about something greater than this human incarnation. We're here to reveal that. And through our gifts, that's where we get to share the divine self within ourselves. 
I love that idea of livelihood. Yeah. That it's, you know, it's bigger than the work that we do. It's almost like uh, it's our servant, our servant leadership behind the work. And when you can find work that is in alignment with your purpose, and it's not always possible, but when, right. you, when you do have that luxury, um, like you said, it's almost like selfish not to share that with the world. And, and, and too, when you, uh, when you recognize what your yes is or your livelihood and you begin to work within that. And I believe that we will reveal infinite possibilities of how to experience the energy of abundance. Abundance, prosperity, and plentitude are, it's, it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. And once we connect with our gifts and our calling and why we're here, we're able to unleash these infinite possibilities that are already within us. They're just not realized yet. Yeah. And and this is what this this weekend has all has been about. And I've been popping in and out and as much as I can. And I've been grabbing stuff from all of our speakers. But this is about reinventing ourselves, reinventing who and what we are and how we're going to show up. Because there's no mistaking that Gaia, Mother Earth, gave us a timeout. It's a spiritual timeout. It said, y'all go home, go to your rooms, take a moment, y'all move away too fast, chill out. And then understand you are to become something new. This is why this time is so sacred for us because now we get to say our yes is who am I going to become in the next phase of our existence in the human incarnation? That's what we're here to do right now. And trust me, I always have to say this when I'm online with, with people and, and people come, I am not denying that this experience of what's going on is happening. This stuff is happening, yes. It is fearful, it is, it is hurting people, people are dying. We're not saying that, but what we're also saying is that we can actually see a bigger reason for this happening. And when we can embrace, yes, we're hurting, yes, we're feeling this, but what is seeking to emerge from this? Mm. See, if we're asking these closed-ended questions like, why is this happening to me? And poor me, and, and I can't get paid, and this and this, we must go back to those expansive questions of what is seeking to emerge new out of this from me. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, then the universe goes, bam, baby, here's your next yes. Here's your new yes. Yeah. And I think the timing, I'm so in alignment. with. I love the idea of a spiritual timeout. Like you guys are just like, you were gifted this beautiful world and you're just messing it all up. And yes, let's go and rethink this thing called humanity. Cause uh, you know, mm. Um, and I love this, and it's going to be different for all of us, right? I, I keep going back. To, we go back to these crisis moments, and I, I think I began yesterday. It felt I, I think it was yesterday. Think of something that you are proud of, that hard time that you got through, because you got through it, and you'll get through it again. And I, you know, one of mine recently was like five years ago. It was like it was a brutal breakup, and at the time, people. I remember I went. I was in a in a sermon, and there was always oh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> church on Valentine's Day after breakup because you're like really I don't know but it was like you know how is this not um to you but how is this for you how what can right. we make how can we become uh, transformed for the better and that's a choice right Skip we get to choose the lens that we look at this it is and there's there's four stages of of, of conscious awareness and the first stage is victimhood everything's being done to me the world is being done to me. This person is doing this to me. And it doesn't give us any responsibility for our next phase of, of growth. And then after that, we understand that there are these laws, these spiritual laws that happen in our universe. We learn how to use them. So it's being done um, for us. But then there's a place where we'll move into the next evolution of, oh, I'm a vessel. And this energy of creativity is moving through me. And then there's another stage where we show up as that force. And we go, oh, I'm showing up as Gaia, as love, as joy, as excitement, as creativity. I'm showing up as a universe because I'm on mission with the mission. That takes a little bit of time of growth. And, and it's, it's, we start where we are. Like you said, we get it where we get it. And then we begin to grow if we're open to it. Yeah, I love the idea of starting where you are, but what you had just said is like, it's almost like it's like that whispering, and this is what I think is a, such a great time, uh, Skip, for us all. Those whisperings, I, you know, I, I heard it said once, I just love it. I'm not, I'm spiritual, I'm not religious, and I, you know, I think this right now, whatever your belief, your faith is, to believe that there's something bigger than 
you know, there's a bigger reasoning, you know, I know a reckoning, an awakening, but whatever was placed on your heart, right? It's that thing, that yearning. Mm. You cannot not do it. It's like almost like annoying. And for me, I don't know where it's going to go, Skip, but maybe the timing's a little different. There was this thing, like I had this idea, I want to go around the world next year to talk about women and their experiences around different. And I was like, that's a nice idea. It wouldn't leave me alone. It was so annoying. It was so annoying. I was like, okay, this isn't actually about me traveling the world. It's like, there's something I need to be sharing. And I love that idea when it's 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 our mission and it's our purpose and it's and it's actually not even about us, right? Right, right, right. It's not. And the one of the things that I'm working with clients right now, and 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 people are coming to me and are going, okay, so what am I to do in this process? I'm here. I'm just stating. I feel like nothing's happening. I'm going. There's so much happening, and I always tell them, there's five things I want you to remember during this time. First of all, be willing to receive your yes. This is your setting intention. Okay, I'm here. Something's seeking to emerge. I'm going to be willing to 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 see my yes. So that's willingness. The next stage is there has to be this receptivity. Sorry, this is this. This is not my. This is not the visioning, is it? Is this the vision? No, no. This is no. This is not the visioning. No, no, no. We we got that. No, no. We're, we're gonna do. We, hey, hey, y'all. We're gonna do a visioning together, guys, to find our yes. But I'm just giving you some things that you can work with before we get into the visioning. So. You got so many. I love that. Like okay. I'll shut, I'll shut up now. Okay. Oh, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. So first of all, we're just going to be in that place of willingness. So be willing to receive the next phase that's coming through. Then there has to be a receptivity of yes. And the yes is, okay, I'm getting this yes. I'm going to receive it. A lot of times we will deny going, no, that's not for me. I'm not supposed to be doing that. I, I fought being a minister for a long time. I knew I was going to be a minister since I was three years old. And I went through life for so long going, no, I'm not a minister because I'm not good enough. I'm not this and that. I was refusing my yes. It wasn't until I said yes to this. 20 years ago, I said, okay, I'm going to do this. So we accept that yes. And we go into that place of being receptive. Then after that, there is a surrendering to it. So we've gotten, we were willingness. And then we went into a place of receiving the yes then we surrender to it. That means, okay, I'm full in. And once you're full in, the next stage of that is the discipline. We gotta be disciplined in all the things that require for us to, in, in, to create our next yes. Because we can't, we have a great idea. If we sit on the couch, it's just a great idea. You gotta get into action. You gotta surrender and be in the discipline of it every day. I love what Terry was saying, consistency. You just got to show up and you keep showing up and showing up and showing up. And then the final thing, after you get that yes and you're willing, you surrender, it is absolutely important that you place gratitude on that. Because gratitude is more than just an attitude, y'all. It is a practice. We must practice gratitude. Every day I get up in the morning going, God, thank you for this yes. Thank you for this new yes. Gaia, thank you for this earth that is now blooming can you imagine the earth is blooming and the pollution has gone down and people are taking time out and the streets are cleared? Oh my, thank you for this yes. So gratitude is key in this in this place of finding your next yes. Mm. Okay, before you go into the visioning to really help people okay. find their yes. Now, okay, so I know my yes now. It, it's just, and it's kind of, it's so weird. It's like, oh, I can share this. It's. Like I'm single now, right? And I don't have kids. I was a bonus mom for uh, five years, and, and and I'm not. And it's not that I'm like anti dating or any of that, but I don't feel for this part of my life. I feel like the whatever I am. I am needing to be single. It sounds so weird to be able to bring my yes into the world, but I am so excited about this. And I'm so yeah. well, I'm not dating. I'm like, maybe when I'm 65, you know, I'm gonna, you know, we, we go 70. But it's not, it's not a pl place of denial. It's just I feel like when I'm in alignment with what I know, I, and when am I happiest? Am I absolute happiest in flow, Skip? When I am serving work forward that I know has helped me and I believe yeah. help others find their yes because that woulda, coulda, shoulda, what if I'm not good enough, that is going to be the anchor that holds you down into the past and we can release the expectations of who we should be 
to show up for our yes. Okay, I'm preaching right now because- Well, when I love that. What you're talking about is in that place of yes, remembering that regret, worry, fear is not a spiritual practice. Mm. And when we're in regret, we're not in spiritual practice. And all this that we're talking about is a spiritual technology to help you to find your yes. And I got to say right there with you, there's a peace that you get when you know something's in line with your yes. And the peace that I got, you know, I was engaged for a whole year and two days before Christmas, I, I just knew this is not a part of my yes. So I broke up the engagement and it was very, very hard. But what was more important for me was to live my authentic self and come forth in this universe as my gifts. And being in a relationship at this time is not, it, it, it's not in the yes. And yeah. I knew it because I was not at peace. Mm. And that's a big thing about your yes. You will be at absolute peace with your yes in every aspect of it. It's when you're, I talk about your heart and your head being in, uh, in alignment. And as yes. long as there's a bit of static, even in that something's out of alignment. And I have never felt more centered. That's right. Not that's right. Always, not always happy, not always like this. Um, but it's never, it never feels, um, I don't feel out of alignment with myself. And in my last relationship towards the end, I felt very out of alignment with myself. And I think it was the universe going, honey, you ain't waking up, we're gonna <laughs> Right? Those you know, little tap, 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 yeah, taps you're yeah. talking about. Oh, okay, here's your brick wall, we're gonna wake you up, but, and whatever. Um, okay, so now we find our yes. What, yes. how do we share our yes or our gifts or our, uh, like, uh, uh, Sharia said yesterday, you know, your, your, your secret sauce, your superpower. Right. Uh, it's very important for us. And I love what Terry was talking about. Um, we get so wrapped up in how many likes we have and posting stuff. And, and that is actually the story in our head because the real vision, the real yes, does not know the story. It only knows you as your yes. But the story in our heads is, if I don't get enough likes, no one heard it. If I don't get en enough love, love taps, no one loved it. And that's your story. Get out the story and get in the glory because your glory is the gifts. And that's what we're talking about here. Get out of those likes. Yeah. We just show up and just know that every day, every moment, every body that you um, are engaged with is your opportunity to share your yes. It, it could be on the 405. God knows that is my biggest spiritual lesson is the 405, child. And sometimes I show up my yes, sometimes I don't. And That's I catch myself and go, oh, I'm not in my yes. And my yes is to be a beneficial presence upon this planet. If I'm driving like a maniac down the 405, I am not being a beneficial presence upon this planet. The next thing is to know that even everything that you decide to put out on socials, because this, this is where we are, we can say yes by being inspiring. There's enough of stuff that we are weeding through right now. It's like, I'm looking for something inspiring. I have to go to the people I know that's putting things out there inspiring, like you and a few other of uh, your, your people that are online. They're really inspiring the world every single day. I'm reading your newsletters every day and you're putting stuff out there. And, and but if we go on our feed down Facebook and all the other things, we have to weed through all the other stuff that we don't want. So I'm responsible for putting out a yes from my soul every day. Every time I put something out there, I want to inspire the world. I don't want to separate the world. There's enough of this. Every time I do something or say something or be up or show up online, we're giving um, services online right now. I'm showing up as the minister I've been called to be everywhere, the grocery store. Listen, I'm not going to knock you over for the toilet paper. I'm going to give you some of mine because that's my yes. And that's where we have to really understand where do I share my yes? Everywhere, everywhere. I love that. Oh my God, goosies. Is that, did you know that? Goosies, goosies. Yeah. I love that. I'm going to step out because we talk about Michael Beckwith, who I know from Agape, and where I saw it used to be the se second Sunday, right? It was the choir? Was it second right. Sunday? Second Sunday. <gasps> I can't remember. Sunday, y'all. Oh, it was talking about going to church. I hey, 
crying and I love I didn't like I didn't like always holding hands at the end but I think I'm getting over that now I was like oh especially now but just <laughs> and then to see you a part of that I'm gonna step off and you can share I'm just gonna you take the the take the floor for a few minutes and share the visioning and have people get really quiet and help this be a moment for the next yes all right I'm okay out. sounds good all right thank you Petra so let's just all just take a moment and just kind of center in and, and the visioning process that um, Michael Bernard Beck with my teacher had created actually began agape. It actually was in, agape was inspired through visioning. And what visioning is, it's a spiritual technology to unleash a higher yes. And it's different from knowing the yes that's in your head already. But if you're looking for a new yes, it is yet to be seen within you but it is within you. So you're revealing the universal idea, the grand idea for your life. So we're gonna do a contemplative meditation. This is what it is. We're going to ask some questions. And there are five main questions we like to ask in visioning. So I'm gonna invite you to place your feet onto the ground and maybe bring your hands right onto your lap. And go ahead and close your eyes and just shut out the outside and just open up your inner ear, your, your, your spiritual ear. Just begin to follow your breath. Just begin to follow your breathing. Notice when you breathe in, the air might be a little bit cooler as it goes out, might be a little bit warmer. And notice how we begin to expand through the torso as the air is coming into our bodies and there's an expansion within receiving our gifts. And notice there is a contraction as we release the air. That is the law of circulation. And we inhale, breathe in. And now we exhale, just release. And we move into a place of unconditional love. The love that is absolute. The love that there has no boundaries. It is infinite. It is all knowing, all loving. This love is the element of our life. It creates us. It is the love that's healing this planet. It's the love of Gaia, the universal love. And as we breathe in this space of unconditional love, we become open to receiving our yes. We become very connected to this love energy, this oneness. From the place of absolute love and a place from this connection, we ask the first question. What is the universe's grand idea for my next yes? What is the universal grand idea God's grand idea, love's grand idea for my next yes. So let's collectively just take a breath in. Big release, let go. The second question we ask, what must I become for this yes to come forth as me? What must I become for this yes to come forth as me? And continue to follow your breath. And as we begin to dive deeper and deeper and deeper into this expansive space of love, our next question we ask, 
What must I release for this yes to come forth in the fullness of itself as me? What must I release for the fullness of this yes to come forth as me? And as we continue to read deeper and we become even more expansive in receiving these downloads, the next question, what talents and gifts and qualities do I possess already? What gifts, talents, and qualities do I possess in this moment for my next yes? As we continue to breathe together, continue to expand in this love energy. The final question we ask, what else must I know? What else needs to be revealed in this greater yes? What else must I know? What else must be revealed? in this greater yes. So I'll take a deep breath in, big exhale. So you have the five questions. And what I was saying is that um, be open to it. And as we vision, you do the visioning, you do the five questions, have a journal with you because we get those ideas, those downloads, and if we don't record them somewhere in our journal, we will absolutely um, forget them. Here's my visiting journal right here. I'll go this way, my visiting journal. And I have it, I take my notes in there. Um, also be open to these questions being answered. It could be instantaneous, it could be tomorrow, it could be down the road, it could be a year from later. And I also shared that my first visioning class over 20 years ago, before I was a minister, I caught a vision of myself being an author of multiple books. And I'm someone who um, does, uh, you, I experienced dyslexia. And I said, I don't even like to write. And I saw this vision of me being an author, being on stage, doing this, doing online, not even know what online meant. And here it is 20 years later as a minister and author and doing it. So the vision unfolds when it needs to unfold, when it's right and you are prime. And what I understand too, is sometimes we get the yes, but we are not ready for our yes. Oh, we have not prepared. We have not prepared to go through our yes. And until we are prepared for that, you know, in that whole saying, be careful what you pray for. Be careful of catching your yes and, 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 and not being prepared. And this yeah. is part of the spiritual preparation that we're doing. And then the last thing I said that this is the greatest willingness. This is the first stage that we go through the willingness this weekend. We are reimagining and imagine comes from imagination, comes from creativity. Creativity is a spiritual quality. It's a spiritual principle. So we're creating and we're reimagining and we're coming from a space of our energy. The last thing I shared with them was we are spiritual energy. We're energetic beings and our physical body and our mental body actually supports the energy. And our our life will be manifest, manifested by the energy that we are within us. So keep your energy high and, and be very positive because this is about the beginning of the next stage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's 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 how I ended it. So <laughs> it was meant to happen. Yeah. Uh, 
such a beautiful ending, Skip. I adore you. I adore you as well. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. And, and and two, if I, you know what, this is not a this is not a plug, and I I just want to make sure everyone knows this. I'm here to be of service. If you want to reach out, and I do prayer calls, and and people just you know grab me for an hour where they need, reach out to me on skipjennings.com. This is really a service that I I do and my calling, and I'm here to support everyone through this time, this time that we're going through. So thank you for this opportunity, Petra. I really, really, really love you so much, so much. Yeah. I love you. We love you. That was the perfect, perfect end of the